This here represents the surface of life. Surface. And we see surfaces, you know, surfaces. And about 300 years ago, scientists, they started wondering what was this, this wood and what was this metal and what was, what was it really? So they start looking into matter. So this side is matter. And this side is mind. Mind and matter. And the scientists, well, they discovered molecules. Deeper they went, and they discovered these atoms. And like I say, they thought that was the smallest particle for a long time. All these things we learn about in school. They went deeper, and they find inside the atoms these little electrons and neutrons and protons. And they went deeper and deeper and deeper, smaller and smaller particles, smaller and smaller particles. They found four forces. On a deeper level, the four became three. And on a deeper level, the three became two. And then, about 30 years ago, modern science, quantum physics, discovered the unified field. The unity of all the particles and all the forces of matter, of creation. Not only did they discover the unified field, but they found that everything that is a thing emerges from this field of no thing. Unmanifest, it is. Unmanifest. It is no hyphen thing, but all things come from it. Anything that is a thing has emerged from this field of unity. It's oneness. The scientists know this exists, but if they wanted to get there, they, you can't get there, it's unmanifest. You can't walk into this field. But any one of those scientists could practice a technique, transcendental meditation, which, remember, true happiness is not out there. You're given a mantra a mantra, a very specific sound, vibration, thought. Very specific. It needs to be life-supporting at all deeper levels. And that mantra that you're given, that Maharishi gives, the key that opens the door. The mantra turns the mind within. Turns the awareness within. And you naturally dive. Why is it natural? Because each deeper level of mind and each deeper level of intellect has more happiness. And the deeper levels of mind and deeper levels of intellect correspond to deeper levels of matter. At the borderline of intellect, you transcend. Transcend is the key word. It means to go beyond. You're going beyond field of relativity, duality, experiencing oneness. Pure, unbounded, infinite consciousness. This consciousness has qualities. Infinite creativity intelligence, energy, love, power, and bliss. 
dynamic piece. Always been there, never had a beginning. It is and it will be forever. Unbounded, infinite, eternal, immutable, immortal consciousness, fullness. Any human being can experience this easily and effortlessly with transcendental meditation. Transcendental meditation is just a vehicle to get you here. When you experience this level, you enliven it and it grows in the individual. So if you started with a ball of consciousness this big, everyone has consciousness. Consciousness is the way to understand consciousness. If you took it away, you'd see what it really is. You take, if there wasn't any consciousness, we wouldn't exist. And if we did exist, we wouldn't know it. It's the I amness of life. It is life itself. Tied to consciousness is all this. Cre creativity, intelligence, energy, love, power, bliss, dynamic peace, all positive, light of unity, all positive. You experience this level and you enliven it and this ball of consciousness that you thought was just gonna stay the same for the rest of your life starts expanding and these qualities expand. So day by day, you're growing creativity, intelligence, love, energy. And this ball of consciousness is now expanding and you're owning unconscious or subconscious more and more and more. Side effect of the growth of this consciousness is negativity starts to recede, tension, I write all these things. Stress, anxiety, sorrow, depression, anger, hate, fear, all starts to go. Can't live in the light of this. In schools, when there's stressed anxiety, horror stories, depression, so many people on pharmaceutical drugs, suicides, shootings, stabbings, you give a student this technique, it's easy to do. It's not concentration, it's not contemplation. Concentration, contemplation keep you right on the surface. You're not transcending. It's this field that does everything for the human being, this field. And you experience this field when you really get there and transcend. This is transcendental consciousness. It's, you know, there's so many names for this field. The Tao, Kingdom of Heaven, all these names for this one field, the absolute, totality. In Vedic language, this field is called Atma. A-T-M-A -A, means the self with a capital S. Know thyself. Get there. Know it by being it. Unfold it. And what you're doing is unfolding your full potential as a human being. Your full potential of the beautiful human being is called enlightenment. And people can unfold their enlightenment. And then you are not angry anymore? No, I told you, that anger lifted away without trying. Poison to the artist, poison to the environment, poison to the human being, lifts away without trying. But it's not that you become numb no. and sleepy and don't want to work. You get more energy, more enjoyment of the doing. And negativity lifting means that conduit of the flow of ideas, the flow of creativity, is not cramped by that. Negativity restricts that flow. So, you know, and you can still have righteous anger, being very strongly for something or against something, beautiful. But the kind of anger that is just bitter, just like selfish kind of anger, no one wants to be around this kind of person. 
and the person's poisoning himself. The person can't work so good. The, that's mind control. Negativity is really mind control. Depression controls the mind now. Can't work. Mm -hmm. Anger controls the mind. You can't work. Sorrow. Some people hold sorrow for years. And you want to visit them and cheer them up, but it doesn't do anything. You get them the chance to transcend and watch what happens. Sorrow will lift away. They'll be back on the road.